truck loaf back in the saddle again with another another one keep popping them out like babies like little rabbit babies Oh, let's go. 401, scared to death. This was 1980s horror at its best and worst, I guess. It's a dude looked like a jacked up alien killing people left and right and chasing them through the sewers and et cetera, et cetera. This is it's so bad, but it's good. I enjoyed it. Uh, 402, not so good. Last house on Massacre Street. This house wasn't even on a street. It's in the middle of nowhere. This husband cheats on his wife on their wedding day. And then the wife runs off and disappears. And then several years later, the guy gets remarried and has another wedding and has a new wife and living in the house that he was supposed to have with the previous wife. And then, then, the, then the old wife pops up and goes crazy yeah not so good though uh 403 desolation it's on netflix now these two women and this child are stalked in the woods by this guy that looks like rob zombie and it's not like he was like intelligently stalking them he was like 100 feet away at all times and they were like who's that dude i don't know he's weird yeah Oh well, and he, he would keep following him, and they were just like, "Hmm, he's still there." And then he finally did something, and was like, "What'd you expect? He's been following you." <sighs> bad writing, not not poorly, not not poorly executed, just bad writing. Um, four oh four evolution. This was on a lot of critics' top 10 horror movies for the year, so I said, well, it's got to be something. It's a foreign film. Not that it, that's anything wrong, but I couldn't make heads or tails of it, and I don't really consider it a horror. It's this beachside area, and there's all these kids that are all the exact same age, and all these. There's no men, no men in town, it's just women. That all kind of look the same too. And then, then the body shows up with a starfish. I think this starfish is supposed to mean something, but it was just a confusing mess, and I can't, I can't say I, I, I would recommend this. But maybe you'll get more out of it than I would. Anyway, four oh five, Amityville, The Awakening. I'm very familiar with the Amityville case. With the, the, all the killings and then the haunting that preceded that. But, um... With, with a subtitle like The Awakening, you would think it would be a prequel. But it's not. It's just another line in Amityville movies. And the Netflix sleeve... <laughs> God bless Netflix, but sometimes they get it wrong. They said this was a found footage movie and it was set in the 80s. And nope, it wasn't. I think they got it confused with another Amityville movie. It was like Amityville Horror or Amityville Terror or something like that. That was actually a found footage movie. I think that's what they were thinking of. But yeah, this is a brand new movie though. Um, I haven't seen the, 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 I've seen the original Amityville, but I never saw the sequel, so I kind of jumped the gun and saw this one, but it was, uh, it was fine. It's, it's, uh, every Amityville is, is basically going to be a possession where someone gets possessed and goes on a killing spree, and that's, because that's what happened back in the day, and that's what you're going to get from everyone, so that's, that's what we got, and it was fine. Uh, 406 Slumber, this movie. A good idea. Executed, not so great. Uh, the sleep doctors running tests on patients and trying to figure out if it's, they're suffering from sleep paralysis or if it's an actual demon that's actually causing them to go crazy and do bad things and 
uh, just seen, I've seen too many about this category. So it kind of got, you know, it's been done. It's been done a hundred times. So I, I couldn't enjoy it. No, nope. uh, 407, Bad Country. Willem Dafoe stars. And this movie was low quality. It was it was like Lifetime Channel quality, but it was still entertaining. It still it still kept me it still kept me interested. Um, it's, 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 uh, this uh, cop William Defoe brings in Matt Dillon to go undercover to bring down this drug lord play, played by Tom Berenger. <sighs> if you're a major actor and you say, you, you're here, the co-star is Tom Berenger, you say, no. You say, nope, I give up. Nope, not doing it. But apparently Willem Dafoe means, needs the money. Um, the, the, the writer, director, producer, Chris Brinker, apparently he died right after the filming of this. What that means, I don't know. I don't know if he offed himself or what, but that's a little side note. But yeah, it's 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 okay. Uh, Four oh eight, Amityville two. I figured since I watched part eight or whatever it was, I might as well go back and watch the ones I missed. So I watched part two, and guess what? It's the same movie. It's almost the exact same film. Uh, the, the teenage boy gets possessed and grabs a gun and starts to, sh starts to shoot. And, and I discussed earlier about movies killing off little kids and this was early eighties and they killed off some kids in this one. So apparently it's been going on for longer than I thought. But, um, other than that, wasn't horrible. Uh, 409 Borgman foreign film. Still don't understand exactly what I watched, but this was kind of a, this woman lets this bum take a shower and clean up and, but she starts to, en starts to enjoy his presence because she's in a bad marriage. So she tells the bum to come back later and he comes back with all these people and all these gardeners and he's, he's and he start to kind of take over and she's like, okay, whatever. Ah, uh, there's so many questions I have, but, uh, that won't get answered, but, um, it was interesting, oh, interesting to watch, yes. Um, 410, The Retrieval, this was set back in the 1800s, uh, early 1800s, um, back in the days of slaves in this country, the, um, this guy hired this young, uh, black kid to kind of, just to go, uh, bring back this other runaway slave, I guess, because he was wanted for something or other. And, um, and he goes and gets him and brings it back. And then, of course, on the way back, they kind of form a bond. They come over like a father-son type friendship. And um, he ends up trying to help him out. So, um, but yeah, it was a nice, nice film. Um, long, though. Uh, 411. Chud 2. The first Chud, I can't believe I watched the sequel. This first Chud was so horribly bad after someone told me it was good. But it was there waiting for me to watch, so I just clicked play and said, why not? This this is the, the such a low-level quality. It's like, you ever watch those Unsolved Mysteries back in the 90s when they do the recreations of the stories? That's, that's what the level this was. This was TV... TV show quality, low level badness. This, these two teens still a corpse and they steal the wrong corpse. It's infected by the chud disease and becomes a zombie and they wake it back up and the hilarity ensues. Yeah. Not so great. Uh, 412 Broken Horses, Anton Yelchin. Finally pumped out a good one um his brother who was in the film was a little handicapped but he was used by this guy Vincent D'Onofrio to be his 
main hitman because he didn't really understand what he was doing when he was killing off people, apparently. But uh, then Anton Yelchin moves away for several years and then comes back. And then D'Onofrio is like, you got to get out of here. You're going to mess up my good thing here. I got a perfect hitman that does what I tell him to do for, you know. And uh, then uh, and Anton Yelchin says, I'm going to get my brother out of here. So that's where the conflict starts and goes from there. But yeah, nice, nice movie. Uh, 413. Another Amityville movie. Amityville Terror. Boy, this was low. This is low quality. And they didn't spend a single dollar on special effects. You all just kind of had to just imagine. Whenever something happened, the camera would cut away or they would just growl and grunt. And Yeah. Yep. <sighs> 414 Lover's Lane. This looked like it was filmed in the late 80s, but it was actually released in 2000. I don't know if that was done on purpose or they just had old cameras. I don't know, but um, it was about this serial killer who would kill people with this hook at, up at Lover's Lane because he was jealous because they were in love and he was a freak, and he, so he would kill them and. Then you fast forward many, many years later and the guy with the hook escapes and the killing spree continues. Or, or is it really him doing the killing or is it someone else? That's what you got to find out. But that's not horrible. Um, 415 Homeless. This was really good. This was kind of an unfiltered view of this 18-year-old kid who was suddenly thrusted into being homeless. And he's kind of a dick, so he can't. He doesn't really accept people that try to help him. He, eventually, he does kind of. But um, yeah, he's he's. It's it's, it's, it's very sad, but um, you can't stop watching because you can't wait to see what you know what pitfall is going to fall down next. But um, fascinating film. It might creep into my top twenty this year. For the uh, homeless, very good. Uh, 416, 3 o'clock high. Uh, those that remember Pee-wee's Big Adventure might remember Large Marge. And I was looking up to see what else Large Marge did. And uh, I found this movie, 3 o'clock high. It was the last movie she did before she passed. It's every 80s movie ever rolled into one right here. This is it. Uh, this this nerd annoys a bully so the bully says I'm going to fight you at 3 o'clock so the rest of the day the nerd's trying to find ways to get out of the fight he tries to get himself you know, suspended or he tries to get himself detention or he tries to buy his way out eventually and the bully says nope we're fighting so uh, it's got a billion people in it too it's got the, the chick that does the, the voice for Bart Simpson She's in it. It's got Skinner from X Files. He's in it, uh, and of course, Large Marge. She plays a the the school nurse. So it was nice to see her. Yeah, not a bad little movie. Um, Four Seventeen Shadow Zone. The critics said this was an alien ripoff, and it's a little bit, but not really. It's a little, well, in a way I can see. It's this, they were messing with people's dream states in this underground facility. And once it would get to it, it's, it's hard to explain. But once it would get to a certain point, it would open up this dimension and things would come through and this alien would come through. And then the, the thing blew up, and so they couldn't send the alien back. So then the aliens started killing people left and right. And so, yeah, in that way, it is like the old alien movie, but um, it's done different. But, uh, but it's much cheaper than the old alien movie. So it is what it is. Uh, 418 Body Melt, this movie. God, Jesus, bad. Woo! I don't know where to begin. People 
starts with this guy. He gets the hold of this disease, and the disease eventually eats your insides and makes you blow up, basically. And he would pass the disease on to people, and even though each different person they got it would blow up in a different way. Sometimes their head would explode. Sometimes their intestines would explode, and yeah, and other other body parts sometimes exploded. That's uh, yeah, garbage. Four nineteen, baby's room. Foreign film. Uh, good attempt, but I am done with the GD ghost on the baby monitor. Yeah. The mother would be listening to the baby mom monitor and you hear, You're gonna die! I'm just done. How many times can you do this? It's. Enough's enough. No more baby monitor ghosts. I'm done. 420. Full time. Fall time. Excuse me. Fall time. Mickey Rourke. Stephen Baldwin. He's had a lot of people. David Arquette. This was a, a cable movie. Was, I, I don't know who made it. Well, what channel? But uh, it was pretty hardcore, too. God. A lot of killing. A lot of blood. These three kids were going to do a fake bank robber because one of their kids' dad was the sheriff and he wanted to play the prank on them to get him going. And then it happens during the time of an actual robbery and the two kind of get paired off. And Stephen Baldwin, gosh, she gets paired off with two of the kids. I don't know what he was trying to do with some of them. Weird, but it's... It was fine. It was watchable. Not so watchable is 421 Indian Runner. This was Sean Penn's directorial debut. And obviously he didn't know what he was doing. Maybe he was given late notice or maybe someone dropped out. Even the, the positive reviews, because I watched this on, uh, on Voodoo. You can read the reviews. You can read the positive and the negative. So I read the positive and even the positive reviews were like, this film is uneven but well acted or it would say this film is oddly poorly paced but and they weren't kidding there there's some weird scenes like it's about two brothers and one's a cop and he's you know going down the straight and narrow and then the other one's a drug addict he's just strange overall Viggo Mortensen and then one scene they're like in this ranch like talking baby talk to each other then they're running through a cornfield <sighs> yeah just spirals and then then the dad it's Charles Bronson and he's <laughs> he was unrecognizable I wouldn't have known it was him if I unless I watched the beginning credits there to see oh but yeah not so great gosh I wanted to enjoy this 422 Central Intelligence, The Rock, and Kevin Hart. Not a big Kevin Hart fan, but this was this was pretty good. And gee whiz, that opening scene with The Rock is a high fat high schooler dancing in the shower. It's probably the funniest thing I've seen in a long, long, long time. <laughs> <laughs> but other than that, the movie was just okay. Um, 423, Live and Let Die, the first of the Roger Moore Bond movies. Uh, maybe I need to take a break from Bond because this seemed like every other Bond movie. Or maybe I'm just not a Roger Moore person. It did uh, co-star Yefet Koto, who... I remember fondly from the Arnold Schwarzenegger movie, The Running Man. He was one of Arnold's buddies. But, um, yeah. Might take a break from Bond. But we'll see. 424, Bye Bye Man. This movie was poorly reviewed by critics. And 
it is a paint-by-numbers horror film, but still well-acted, well-produced, fairly enjoyable. If you're a fan of the genre, which I am, uh, 425, I liked it, 425, Bearing the X, another Anton Yelchin movie, and boy, this was, this might be his worst one, uh, hmm, Anton Yelchin has this girlfriend, and they're not really getting along well, and it's, he knows it's time to end it, but, uh, and he works at this dark shop, where he sells crazy death type things and this curse falls on him because he said he would love his girlfriend forever so and then she dies but since it's because of the curse she comes back to life and starts you know saying here I am but in the meet before she came back he started dating the girl from the ice cream shop and wants to pursue things with her then then he has the dead ex show up so uh Yep, I'd skip that one. If you have any choice at all, if there's an exit to the building and someone says, we're watching Burying the X, you say, okay, see ya. But, uh, yeah. I don't know. I think we got the Winchester movie is on the way, the new horror film with Helen Mirren. And then we got um, another Bigfoot movie. And then we got one called uh, The Pawn Shop Chronicles, which looked like it could be fun. So until then, bye bye.